Hi stampers, this is Debbie Henderson from Debbie's Designs. This video is actually being recorded for one of my live Facebook events. I'm actually doing a workshop live on my Facebook page. This is the address for my Facebook page if you're viewing this on YouTube after the event has passed. I would love it if you visited me and liked my page. Um, I try to schedule some neat events on my Facebook page. So today's card is called a swing easel card. It does fold flat for mailing, but it folds like this and tucks into the leaves so it sits open. It's a really neat card and how I did this on Facebook is I posted little snips of videos step by step one at a time so that followers could uh, create the card as I posted the videos. So let's get started on what we need for supplies. For supplies you're going to need an eight and a half by 11 sheet of watermelon wonder cardstock and I'll show you how to cut that. A sheet of whisper white and a scrap piece of soft sky. For designer paper I'm using the striped sheet from the Merry Moments designer paper. I'm using two stamp sets today, the Joyful Season and I'm using the bird which is the outline image and also the one that we use to color in. This is a two-step stamping and I'm using the light-hearted leaves stamp set, the larger branch image and the one up here that almost looks like a Christmas tree. Thanks for the expressions natural elements which those come in three words, but these two are a little bit too long to fit on the card. So we're going to be using the thanks today. For ink colors, we need watermelon wonder, crushed curry, and chocolate chip. We're going to use stamping dimensionals. And other than that, you just need your paper cutter, your bone folder, your snail, and liquid glue. So how this is going to work for those of you guys that are watching through Facebook, I'm going to do um, like one step at a time and post the video and give you five minutes to catch up and then I'll post the next step. So it'll be mini videos one step at a time. For those of you that are on YouTube, of course, this video has been edited into one video. So you'll have um, all the steps in one continuous video. Now for the first step, you're going to bring in your paper cutter and your eight and a half by five and a half inch sheet of watermelon wonder. And we're going to cut that at on the long, on the short side, five inches long and 10 inches on the eight and a half inch side. So five by 10 is what you need for a cardstock piece. And we're going to score in the center at five inches. Now we're going to get to all the cutting. And one little tip that I wanted to show you that I did with my paper trimmer, in order for me to be able to see the numbers on my ruler here on the, the arm part of it, I flipped it over and I added a piece of Whisper White cardstock so that the numbers peek through a little bit clearer than just clear on clear. So if that's something you want to do to yours, that's a very good tip to use. So now we're going to add our cardstock in and I'm, the long way is vertical. I'm going to line that up at the one inch mark and I'm going to position my blade at the one inch mark on my guide here and we're going to cut from one inch to two and a quarter inch stop pull up move to two and three quarter inch and cut to four now we're going to lift up the arm and move over a quarter, um, an eighth of an inch so when you are over here on your one inch, you're going to move over two lines. 
and you're going to cut the same thing. Position on one to two and a quarter, lift up two and three quarter to four. And that completes the first side. Now we're going to turn the cardstock over to the left and you're going to line yourself up on four inches. And again on the one inch mark, but this time we're going to go straight through to four. And again, we're going to move over an eighth of an inch, so two lines from the four. Start at one and go all the way to four. Now that we have two sides done, this is what your cut line should look like. You have a piece here that wants to come out and over here you have a space in the center and you have two lines parallel and two lines parallel. So now we're going to actually take the cardstock and flip it over and we're going to do the same thing. Start on one, one on your arm to two and a quarter lift up the arm two and three quarter to four move over an eighth of an inch start at one to two and a quarter lift up two and three quarter to four so now this piece here is going to fall out because it's cut all the way through and now for the fourth side, I want you to disregard what you see here. I was recording the fourth side and for some reason it didn't record. So my card is all done and I have a piece missing, a step missing. So we're going to do it right now without me cutting. So the fourth side you have left is this one right here. You're going to line up your card stock at the one inch mark. Place your blade on the one inch mark and cut up to the four inch mark. Then you're going to move your cardstock over to one and one eighth and repeat. Line up at one and cut all the way to four. And that'll make your four, um, four sides with your cut lines. And now once you have all your cuts made, you just remove the two sections here and what I did is I just used my scissors and snipped on each end or you can use an exacto knife <clears throat> and now we're going to do our scoring so you're going to put your cardstock in at the one and seven eighths mark which is two lines away from the two make sure you have your scoring blade and not your cutting blade score and score. You're only scoring on your two outside edges. Move to two and a quarter. Do the same thing. And the last one at two and three quarter and do the same thing. And you'll notice once you score the last two, they're actually even with where you ended your cutting. So now when you fold on your score lines, you're going to fold this one down, up, and then down. So it makes like a little step. Whoops, I had my cardstock backwards. So down, up, and down. And this is what you now should look like. And you'll see that it'll, it'll stay in place once we get the stopper portion. Make sure you use your bone folder. And that'll make your folds even better and it'll the card will stand better also pull this one that way and the last one in the downward position so that's what your card should look like at this point 
Now let's get started with cutting our other layer. So let me move everything aside and we're going to bring in our designer paper and I'm using the striped pattern. You can use any pattern you want. The first one is going to be four and three quarter by four and three quarter. You're actually going to need two pieces measuring that. So my second piece, four and three quarter by four and three quarter. And lastly, you should end up exactly with two and a half. If you use a 12 inch sheet, two and a half by two and a half. So you now have these two that measure the same and the two and a half. We're going to put two of these aside because now we have to make the hole in the center of this one so it can be layered over the easel or the step portion of your card. So we're going to move this to three quarter inch and your arm is also going to be on the three quarter inch and you're going to go down to four and you're going to do this on all four sides so turn to the left three quarter inch on your trimmer three quarter inch on the arm down to four turn left three quarter inch to four and turn left three quarter inch three quarter inch to four so that Again, if you didn't go all the way through, just take your scissors and cut. And you should have a frame that'll fit perfectly on your cardstock piece. Now we need to cut our white layers. So let's bring in some white. And we're only going to need two pieces. The first one is four and a half by four and a half. And your second one will be two and a quarter by two and a quarter. So now we can start stamping. What's quite funny about this card is that I don't have one made up ahead of time. I'm recording this as I go. Um, so hopefully it'll turn out the way I want. I'm going to bring in the chocolate chip ink and the outline of my bird because remember the bird is a two-step stamp you stamp the outline and you color it in with a second stamp and I'm thinking I want my let me see if I can find my designer paper layer I want my thanks to sit at the bottom like this and I kind of want my bird sitting on the thanks so I need his head to be almost even at the top with the white so let's ink the stamp and we're probably going to lose some of his tail but that's okay okay so there's the bird outline and then we're going to bring in the watermelon wonder to do the coloring And just make sure you can see through the window, through the clear block. And there's the bird. Isn't he pretty? I love the way that um, you look at this and you wouldn't think that it would add light and dark shading. But just because of the way the stamp is manufactured, it's really neat. And finally, we're going to bring in the crushed curry. And that's just a really tiny stamp to color his beak. And again, make sure it's picking through the cards, the uh, clear block. So that's our bird. Now all we have left to do is to assemble our card and then we'll do the stopper for the last portion. So let's bring in our designer paper and I'm gonna do the frame portion first. Now 
and this should fit perfectly on the card. The only thing we'll have to do once it's glued down is refold our score lines. Okay, so there's the frame. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the inside. And I'm making sure my stripes are going in the same direction as the frame. Next, we're going to glue in the white. And of course, it's going to cover most of my stripes. Okay, that's the inside. Now we'll do the little square in the center. And again, let's make sure that our fold lines are redone. Okay, so those are all set. This one here doesn't seem to want to cooperate. Okay. And for my bird image, I'm actually going to use stamping dimensionals to glue him in place. And then we'll glue our thanks. And I'm going to use the multi-purpose glue. And I'm only going to add glue at the top because the bottom is going to hang below where the stamping dimensionals. So again, I wanted to make it appear like he's standing on the thanks. I'll just hold that down for a little bit. And let that dry. And now we're going to work on the stopper while this dries. And I'm going to bring in a scrap piece of the Calypso Coral and Soft Sky. And we're going to use the chocolate chip ink. I decided I'm going to use the leaves as my stopper. So I'm using two leaves from the Lighthearted Leaf stamp set. I'm using this one and this one. Since I wasn't able to fit any branches on my um, for my bird to sit on, I thought the leaves would be appropriate. Okay, I've got those two stamped. I'm going. To, whoops, I didn't even show them to you. I'm going to go cut them with my Big Shot, and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my leaves all cut out, and I'm going to bring my card back in along with stamping dimensionals and as you fold your card you should be able to position it the way you want I'm gonna put mine about there so we'll add some dimensionals so wherever you want your card to stop is where you are going to add your leaves. Of course, I'm going to have to push mine in just a little bit more so my leaves will fit on. And you'll see that the card slides right into the leaves so that it stops there and it stays upright. Now let's add the second leaf. And that's just for layering purposes. And there you have it. My card's all done. And it will fold flat for mailing. You will need to create an, an envelope, a 5 inch by 5 inch envelope that you can create with your envelope punch board to send this card. It is going to be a little bulky because of the thanks uh, wooden element, but you could always put a sentiment there instead if you'd prefer to have a flatter card. Hi Stampers, this is Debbie Henderson from Debbie's Designs. 
I decided I'm going to add um, a second portion of my video to go with this easel card that I made, the swing easel card. Um, because it is a 5 by 5 inch card, a square card, I'll show you how to make the envelope with the envelope punch board to go with it. So this is the envelope punch board. And as you can see, I need the 5 by 5 measurement. A little blurry there for you. If you follow the card size, which is five by five, you move over to the paper size, which is eight and one eight by eight and one eight. That's what this is. And then you move over to the score line section, which is four and one eighth. So what that means is we're going to move the designer paper over and I did cut um, the matching pattern to the card so I move this order over to four and one eighth that's where I'm going to score my first score line and that's the only time you need to measure while we're here we also need to punch flip it over to the left instead of measuring this time we use this little, um, I don't know what, this little leg that sticks out. We're going to line that up right on the score line. Then we're going to score and punch. And we're going to do this three times. Flip to the left, line up with the score line, score and punch. Turn to the left, score line score and punch so you now have your four score lines and your four notches now what we're going to do is flip this over so we can use the punch right here and I'm going to punch all four of my corners and you can use this corner rounder punch on your cards also because it cuts so well so now I have all of my corners rounded. I'm going to bring in the bone folder. Sometimes the lines are hard to find on designer paper. I'm going to fold all of these flaps over. And now I'm going to fold this one over. You can glue it two ways. You can glue it this way or actually fold the two flaps over, which is what I prefer. Just going to add just a tad bit of glue there. And then I'm going to add glue to the V portion of your flaps and press this down. And that's how you create your envelope for your card to fit in. And now if you fold your card over, this will fit, and I think I'm going to turn it upside down so the full lines will cooperate. This will fit perfectly into your envelope, and you can just add glue there. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll use a little cutout, a scallop circle or something to put there. And then you can just add a label or write directly on the designer paper. So that's how you make an envelope using the punch board to go with an odd size card, which we were using the 5x5 measurement today. Thanks for stopping by.